Coming up, after the topic caused a stir at Fargo City Hall, Roars Construction unveils new plans for a townhome project. A local police department is issuing a warning about this high-risk sex offender now living in the area. And new information released in the deadly hit and run involving South Dakota Attorney General Jason Roundsburg. Hello and welcome to the Nightly Review. I'm Tom Tucker. We begin with a look at tonight's headlines, then a closer look with comments tonight on how the small community of Harwood could be impacted by growth. And in tonight's one on one, a conversation with a candidate for a local school board who is speaking out against a district policy on transgenderism. But first, after the topic caused a stir at Fargo City Hall, it appears Roars Construction is ready to continue work in the Roosevelt neighborhood. The president of the company, Jim Roars, has announced the business has filed an application for the building permit to build seven townhomes on the block near the new Newman Center Church. Roars says his crews are prepared to break ground as soon as the building permit is approved and anticipates the townhomes will be ready for occupancy by the end of this year. Commissioner Dave Pepcorn recently criticized the builder for having not yet completed the project. An employee at a bar in downtown Fargo lost part of an index finger during a bar fight involving patrons, one of whom was arrested. It happened around 2 o'clock Sunday morning at Fort Knox. During the fight, police say the employee had a portion of his finger bitten off and was taken to an area hospital. The man arrested for aggravated assault is 24-year-old Moorhead resident Dylan Wrighton. Police are looking for the person involved in a burglary and arson at a business in South Fargo. Fire crews were called to FPN Gaming in the 4100 block of 38th Street South around 8.15 this morning. The business owner says someone broke into the building overnight, stole items, and then set the building on fire. The fire was eventually contained. The Fargo Police Department is notifying the public that a registered sex offender now lives at 206 23rd Street South. North Dakota authorities have deemed Franklin Lee Crone II as having a high risk of reoffending, and they say he is a lifetime registrant. Crone has been convicted twice on charges of corruption and solicitation of a minor. In both cases, the victims were teenage girls. Crone has also been convicted on charges related to abusing a five-month-old child. A former Moorhead police officer is running for Moorhead City Council. In a statement released to WDAY Radio, Ryan Nelson announced his bid for Moorhead's first ward council seat. Nelson worked for the Moorhead Police Department for 17 years, working as an officer, detective, and patrol sergeant. He currently serves as the Director of Public Safety at MSUM. More than 120 new U.S. citizens are set to be welcomed in North Dakota. The candidates come from 40 countries and live across the state. We're told each immigrant has completed a year-long process that includes an exam. Ceremonies for naturalization are set for June 8th and 9th at North Dakota State University in Fargo. The president of Hornbacher's Grocery Stores is talking about the impact inflation is having on his customers. It feels like, uh, and I'm sure for any guests that's coming into the grocery store, it feels like everything is going up. Um, and it's just that, that overall uh, sticker shock at the end of the shopping trip that it feels like my $50 didn't go as far as $50 used to. Matt Lyseth says the largest price hikes for grocery products come from increased oil prices, which drive up transportation and packaging costs for grocery stores and for their suppliers. Poultry events in North Dakota remain suspended as the nation's bird flu outbreak continues. The State Board of Animal Health canceled all shows, public sales, swaps, and exhibitions of poultry and other birds back in March. Sales that are still allowed include private, catalog, and retail. The use of online marketplaces is also encouraged. Thousands of documents related to the Jason Roundsburg crash investigation are now posted on the website for the South Dakota State Legislature. The documents were posted ahead of the Attorney General's upcoming impeachment trial. Roundsburg struck and killed Joe Beaver on the shoulder of the road near Highmore back in September of 2020 and then drove away from the scene. On a lighter note tonight, North Dakota native and former Miss America Kara Mund is a new graduate from Harvard Law School. Mund graduated with a spring class with cum laude distinction. Mund also received the 2022 Kristen P. Muniz Award, which recognizes a graduating student for outstanding character. Moon became North Dakota's first national crown winner in 2018. 
In a closer look tonight, the mayor of Harwood says the small city just north of Fargo needs to make changes if it will be able to accommodate growth now happening in other areas around the FM metro. Something that not necessarily uh, something that's bad, but we're, we're concerned about it because of the infrastructure that we have in place, you know, can't support a, a whole uh, if we had, you know, say 300 additional houses. I, you know, I don't think our infrastructure could sustain that. So it is something that we're concerned about just from a, a public work standpoint. You know, do we have the right infrastructure in place? Mayor Blake Hankey and county officials believe Harwood will see expansion in the near future, bringing changes to critical infrastructure, including sewage and roads. The most recent census numbers show Harwood's population at around 800. Hankey talked about growth and recent annexation while appearing on WDAY's Bonnie and Friends. There's a new development going up uh, just to the north of Harwood. It'll, it's, we did annex it into the city, but only 10 houses to start. Okay. And right, we can handle 10 additional houses, uh, but, but can we handle 20 or 30 or 50 or 100? Mayor Hankey says he's speaking with Cass County engineer Jason Benson about the anticipated northward expansion of both Fargo and West Fargo and the impact it will have on Harwood. Well, thanks for choosing the Nightly Review to stay on top of all the important news happening in the FM Metro and the Red River Valley. To make sure you catch every episode, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button below. A fantastic day weather-wise to start the week, but what can we expect for tomorrow? Meteorologist Justin Storm is in the Skywatch Weather Center with a look at tonight's forecast. Thanks, Tom. After a beautiful afternoon today, we're going to see the clouds increasing into tonight. We'll see temperatures remaining mild, only dropping down to a low near 50, and wind will lighten up as well out of the northeast around 5 to 15 miles per hour. On your Tuesday, mostly cloudy to partly sunny across the area. We will see some scattered showers developing later in the afternoon with temperatures in the upper 60s with light wind and a slight chance for a few isolated showers into your Tuesday night as well as on Wednesday afternoon. However, most of the day does look dry. We'll have high temperatures in the lower 70s with light wind and partly cloudy skies. It could happen to you or someone you love. One moment, one diagnosis can change everything. Thankfully, there's a program that helps caring people uplift families through a crisis. Lend a hand up, raising financial help and hope through community benefits and online campaigns. A program that boosts generosity so gifts go further. Lend a hand up helps you help your neighbors. Learn more and give at lendahandup.org. Welcome back to the Nightly Review. In tonight's one-on-one -on -one conversation, a candidate for the school board in West Fargo is speaking out against a district policy regarding transgenderism. Cole Davidson is a political newcomer and father of three students in the district. He's also a sales management executive with the Fortune 100 company. Davidson first talked about why he's running. Yeah, well, I, the three biggest reasons I'm running are named Noah, Oliver, and Gabrielle my three children who are in the West Fargo public school system. When I look at what's happening in uh, school boards and schools across the nation and locally, I have a lot of concerns. Um, one of the biggest concerns is that uh, there are controversial social and political ideologies that are being foisted upon our kids. Um, even in West Fargo, there's a policy on gender transitioning students, where if a, a student presents at school as a, a gender other than what they were born with or other than their biological gender, um, the, the language of the policy compels administrators and educators to keep that transition a secret from parents. Uh, and that's just wrong. Uh, no school, no person, no healthcare provider, nobody should be able to keep secrets about my minor child from me. The parents should be involved 100%. So that's one of the examples. Um, there, there are a few other policies I'm looking at or pieces of that particular policy. Um, right within that policy as well, and, and many people don't know about it, um, transgender students are allowed to use the restroom that uh, aligns with the gender they identify with. And so when I think about my daughter who's seven growing up in the West Fargo school system, I, I have issue with her being required to share a locker room with a biological male. 
So other issues that have your attention include a student discipline and violence targeting teachers. Your thoughts on those topics? Yeah, so I've heard stories from uh, past and present West Fargo teachers where students are engaged in a, an aggressive or physical alter altercation in the classroom. They're, they're back in class two to three hours later. You know, what does that do to the learning environment, not only for, for students, but for teachers, right? This person who was just throwing punches earlier is now back in the classroom two hours later, and I can't concentrate on what the teacher's saying because I'm scared, right? Um, so in my mind, whether they, you know, they're repeat offenders or not, those students should be removed from the learning environment. Uh, how long should they be removed? I think that needs to be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. We want to get students the, the help and support that they need if they have mental or behavioral issues. But they should not be allowed to uh, create an unsafe learning environment for the other students and for teachers. Um, my kids come home, elementary age kids come home. If a student is having uh, an outburst or a tantrum, uh, they oftentimes get taken into the hallway and educators or, or administrators hold mats around the student in the hallway. They close the hallway down and they allow that student to have their tantrum before they return to the classroom. That student should be removed. Their parents should have to come and get them. Um, and, and I think, you know, the, the parent having to come and get them is a consequence for the parent, and I think that's very appropriate. Parents need to have consequences as well. It helps engage them in, in getting their child the help that they need because schools can't do it all. Talk about your personal background and how that might impact your contributions as a school board member if elected. Yeah, I was born and raised on a ranch in western North Dakota, a little town called Stanley. Um, I was involved in sports. I uh, wrestled. I, I rode bulls. My, my dad actually ran a string of rodeo bulls for a few years, so that was pretty cool to do. Um, but you know, grow up on a, growing up on a ranch really formed the, the values that I hold dear in my life. Uh, we took care of each other. You know, our, our nearest neighbor outside of my grandma was about a, a quarter mile, a half mile away. And my dad worked in the oil field, so he'd be gone uh, a week at a time and then home a week. And uh, it left my brother and I to take care of 100 head of cattle, right? And I'm, I'm 13, he's 15, I'm, I'm 14, he's 16 when we're doing this. And we're in the middle of a North Dakota winter, the water freezes up, we don't know what to do. Well, we, we call up our neighbor, you know? And no matter what he had on his plate, I'm sure he's working 12, 14 hour days trying to keep his cattle fed and warm and, and uh, in water. Well, he'd come over and help us, right? Uh, Mark Uran was his name, and he's, he's my neighbor for life. I see him to this day, I still say, hey neighbor. And so that, that really made a huge impact on me, um, taking care of each other, taking care of the community members. And so, you know, if elected, I would approach the position with the same mindset. I'd like to thank West Fargo School Board candidate Cole Davidson for joining me for tonight's one-on-one -on -one conversation. Davidson is one of three newcomers and four incumbents vying for four open seats on the June 14th ballot. Well, that will do it for this Monday night, June 6th, 2022. I'm Tom Tucker. Thanks for watching the Nightly Review.